became that window where people could sometimes go window shopping and then maybe someday hit the connect button and message saying, hey, I want to uh, do something with PR, I want to do something with media, I want to do something with content and can you help me? Uh, there's a huge emphasis on growing the creator, being a part of the creator economy because content is king right today, especially user generated content. Um, so there was nothing wrong with the job or the organization or my team or my role per se. Uh, in the process, I just forgot what I originally set out to do or what my initial plans were. Paychecks keep coming one month after another. Parties in Bombay, it's like wake up at 6 a.m., go to bed at 10 and boom, repeat, repeat, repeat until you wait for that weekend. And I was like, what am I even doing with my life? There's no risk. There's there's absolutely nothing that I'm doing apart from my job right now. So hello and welcome to Balancing the Act. Today I am with Aishwarya Tokri, who's a public relations consultant just like me. And she is on a learnation. This is something that I'm not and she's on. But Aishwarya is not only traveling the world or traveling India for leisure, but is also learning in the process of traveling. So this is something that uh, not a lot of people do, but she's one of them. So I'm so happy to have you on the show. And just, uh, uh, you know, to give people uh, an insight into what you're doing currently. You're doing a lot on LinkedIn, you're doing a lot on uh, creating content. So I think we should start with, you know, telling people about who you are, what you do and how important is LinkedIn for you at this moment. So, like you rightly pointed out, I'm a public relations consultant. Just like you, I started independently practicing, independently practicing as in for in normal layman terms, uh, when solo, don't work with any company as such or have a uh, employer as an agency or anybody else. So I practice on my own since last a year and a half. That's what my job is, right? Now, in order for that job to keep running and in order so that I keep on getting clients, somehow I think in the process, LinkedIn became sort of my showcase. It became that window where people could sometimes go window shopping and then maybe someday hit the connect button and message saying, hey, I want to uh, do something with PR, I want to do something with media, I want to do something with content and can you help me? So it just became that for me in the process and uh, right from business development to turning connections into friends, LinkedIn became the go-to stop for everything or at least is so far right now. So yeah, uh, that's about me as a consultant and how LinkedIn is helping me right now. I also became a part of their creators program, the first ever creators program that they recently launched in India. Uh, there's a huge emphasis on growing the create, being a part of the creator economy because content is king, right, today, especially user-generated content. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me as a creator and me as a consultant. So, so you quit your job uh, during the pandemic for a particular reason or you were like, okay, I'm fed up of this job. I'm like, you know, this is toxic. What is the reason for you to quit your job? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. So uh, unlike, unlike a lot of people who have stories with toxic jobs, I don't think I had a toxic job. I really loved my job. I loved the company I was in. I was working with the largest public relations firm in the country. I love my bosses. I love my team. There was nothing wrong with the job or the organization or my team or my role per se. But uh, Kevin, you know, a pandemic was not easy for anybody. Everybody had their own struggles and they had their own journey. So I was in Bombay for about roughly three to four years. I studied in Xavier's in Mumbai. Uh, I did my PR and communications course there and uh, got a campus offer. So straight jumped and started working. And I think uh, in the process, I just forgot what I originally set out to do or what my initial plans were or what my somewhere I think value systems were, what was the impact that I wanted to create on this world, right? Uh, because paychecks keep coming one month after another, parties keep happening, and then you have friends, you have colleagues, you have clients. So you just, you just have no time to think in Bombay. It's like wake up at 6 a.m., go to bed at 10, and boom, repeat, 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 until you wait for that weekend. So when the pandemic happened and all of this noise was cut out, I moved to Goa to escape. Uh, the Bombay tussle and suddenly with so much peace around what you do you of course confront your inner voices or your inner devils or inner fears so one after another they all started haunting me and I was like what am I even doing with my life there's no risk there's there's absolutely nothing that I'm doing apart from my job right now so just decided to quit like that and then I remember my MD was shocked my team was shocked they were like what happened you were on a tragically here 
so that's how i quit my job and i started something called as learnication uh, idea was originally to not work at all and just have like a 3 4 months vacation to reboot but that never happened so life turned out to be like a vacation with work on the side so i just made it as a vacation to gain a new perspective life to life or to learn about different things about culture people and that's what learnication is and that's how i started it after quitting my nice so because, and my job all right because this is a travel podcast and you've you know shifted uh, base from basically bombay to goa tell us a little about goa in the different seasons of the year now you've been there for quite a while uh, you've experienced their uh, winters summers their rains now so what is it like and what is the best season to be there like people tell me ki okay december mein jaoge okay, you know I, i have cousins there my sisters there a lot of people i know are from right. goa but uh, you know like you tell me what you think about goa and the seasons of goa and when you should be there actually that's a really interesting question because you're going to get a different answer from me again kevin okay. uh, most people will tell you that the best time to be in goa is maybe during the year end when christmas new year's mm. eve and it's it's in its full glow right yeah. but to me honestly the best time to visit goa especially when my close friends or anybody who i know ask i think it's during the monsoon season hands down there's a complete different side to goa which unfortunately not many people know about Goa has so much to it beyond the parties and the beach culture right there's just so much greenery around so many communities around so many of these micro events happening which help you connect with different people amazing food in general so i think monsoons uh, are the best time to be in goa also the another benefit of being in goa during off season is that your stays far far more cheaper so all of the great hotels are available at steep discount so i think and plus there's less a crowd everywhere so no long waiting lines quick entries and everything of that sort but yeah so one thing must do i think in goa if you're during monsoons is a trek in south nothing and i'm i'm telling you nothing beats that so that is one activity that i really really love enjoy doing during the monsoons just trekking and walking through the forest um and there are a lot of these small streams that come around during that time so you can just maybe pack up food and go have like a nature bath and things like that as a lot of people do it it's damn fun with your friends all right so uh, apart from being uh, you know a content creator and living you've also changed houses you you know you've moved to a new place you're staying alone so tell us about the good and the bad side of of this story right of of leaving uh, bombay i understand that you you've come to bombay you've settled down now you're unsettled gone to goa and then there is uh, like where to stay what to eat how to cook my food increase in you know uh, where do i set up my office and stuff like that so tell me a little about your journey of uh, you know moving from uh, one place to another and also the experience that comes along with it because your uh, travels teach you something right Yeah yeah definitely I think there's a lot of a uh, happy picture lofty picture that a lot of people who are freelancing or or working remotely paint uh, some of it or large part of it is true the journey of course teaches you a lot like it teaches you to be financially disciplined it teaches you to be independent emotionally right uh, cuz you don't generally have a lot of people around you like when you go to office so you have to be very resourceful and you have to be very disciplined so it it has those pros uh, like time management productivity uptake and things like that but uh, the one downswing of moving from a metro to a place like goa initially was the pace of life i think a lot of people have great difficulty in adjusting to that in bombay everything is very convenient you tell your chai wala to give you chai at 7 6:59 mostly the chai would be on your table right in goa you tell people to come at your door maybe at 9 o'clock they'll turn up at 11 and it's it's not their fault their priorities in life is to enjoy life is to live it at its fullest it's to eat breakfast with their family or to take their children to school just simple pleasures and they prioritize that before anything else in bombay is the complete reverse your work is first priority so that's one flip side if you are a person who's very used to living in organized life uh, who has no room to sort of tweak it around play around with it then you'll have a really tough time adjusting in goa another 
uh, flip side, I think it was not a flip side earlier. It was actually an advantage of moving to Goa because rents were generally uh, considerably very low. You you got what you paid for in terms of a three BHK apartment. Maybe you'd get like a thirty four k to forty eight k. Now those prices are shooting up because everybody wants to move to Goa. So there's like a great uh, burden on the infrastructure right now. Uh, that's happening. Rents are shooting up, so it's almost coming down to living like any any other city. So yeah, these two things, and lastly, I think it's just internet. You know, some places like just have such bad internet. That's like such an important call one day, and I was jumping from one house to another in search of good internet and electricity. So yeah, small things that if you manage and work on can be taken care of. Because we're talking about Goa, we've spoken about the food uh, and a little about you know how they live their life. Uh, is there anything that you you would always remember or take back home from this learnation uh, uh, from Goa? Um. Wow, it's been such a roller coaster journey for me because when I moved to Goa, I moved with the mindset of being here only for two weeks. In my head, when the pandemic initially started. I thought, yeah, Bharat Bandi, you know, just like how Bharat Bandi is, maybe one week, two days max. That's how I thought in my head it would be. Uh, so I thought initially I would just be here for two weeks. Two weeks turned out to one month, one to one quarter a year, and now it's been literally two and a half years. So initially I had great difficulty just being in Goa. I could not necessarily find people who I could connect with because I don't drink and smoke or like. Do any kind of substance to, and there are a lot of parties happening generally. In mm-hmm. So I could not find the groove around my people and and making new friends like that. Um, and I was just going through my own journey of transitioning from a full time to this to right. So initially, I was oh my god, am I doing the best thing possible? So there was a lot of nervous breakdowns and things like that. But now that I look back, it honestly helped me to declutter a lot. Like it. Helped me to take off a lot of things that I was doing absolutely wrong. Like earlier, life moved around work. I mean, wherever the work is, house will be there. So there were no house goals. Like there were no uh, parent goals. There were no family goals. Whatever work demanded, everything else would be supplied and taken care of. So I think that's one huge change that has happened. Uh, now I look at life as life. I don't look at as I don't look at it as work, right? So that's one biggest uh, takeaway that I've had. And second, uh, like I said earlier, I think productivity has been, to be honest, better. Earlier, I used to work nine to almost six or nine sometimes, and <laughs> you feel like you're you feel like you're doing a lot, and then your ego is inflated. Yeah, I have a white collar job. I'm you know going around to meetings, and you you get this. I think as a young pers- person, you get this inflated ego that I am actually doing, a good job. doing mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you are, you are. <laughs> but uh, then there's there's so much more to world beyond that. Like there's so much more to world beyond paychecks. There's so much. There's so many things to take care of. There's so many issues to be handled for yourself, for for your own family, or maybe for the community that you are living in. So I think that way. While work has been great, uh, I compartmentalize it now. I work for certain hours a day, and I'm able to do as much as I used to, or even more sometimes. So there has been that. Uh, a lot of distractions got away from work. So you know, just there was a general impact in productivity. And third, I think I've started um, thinking a lot more, reading a lot more about what are some social economic challenges that I can address or. Or the community needs to address, the world needs to address. So just in general, upskilling, uh, knowledge acquisition is happening at a. I personally feel a far more better pace than it was before. So, yeah. And in terms of creating content, because you are also YouTube, uh, sorry, LinkedIn <laughs> creator now. I think soon you will be on YouTube as well. Uh, oh no! So, <laughs> so what is it to be consistent with creating content? Because I've understood this is all a game of consistency. You do it thirty days in a row, whatever it is. Maybe you're going to the gym for thirty days. You're creating content for thirty days. You're working on a client for thirty days. If you just do it for a certain period of time, you are going to see results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, that's how it is. Uh, I think. 
so my journey with content creation per se was by accident i was just 22 years old when somebody a friend told me that on linkedin a lot of things are happening outside the country like a lot of young people are creating content so uh, maybe you like get good content to consume i i did not even want to be a creator i just wanted to like consume what things about what's going on in the job market what are new trends in pr and things like that so that's when i opened my account uh, i did not even open my account to search for a job unlike what the world thinks linkedin is about right a job searching portal so slowly i started uh, connecting to different people consuming quality content from them uh, changing my own belief systems getting a lot of insights and and things like that so it became sort of my library uh, to go to and when that happened i thought man i'm also missing out on a lot in life because i used to debate and i used to participate in a lot of education competitions back in schools and colleges and somehow i think job like my work sort of took it away from me and i was not necessarily becoming a conf- not necessarily being the confident speaker that i was so i thought let's just start creating yes. content on linkedin because there was a, there were anyways just 50 people who were connected to me and it was like a very private profile back then So I thought if I fail, I'll fail here. But then, luckily, that like there was a chain, and one video after another, one post after another, it just happened by accident. Until the pandemic, when I actually sat down and I said, "Okay, something is happening here. Something is brewing here, and maybe I should be a part of this." And luckily, during the same time, they launched their creator accelerator program and creators program. <laughs> so I became a part of that. uh got insights into what are some products that they are introducing what is the kind of content maybe uh could be consumed by a lot of young professionals and i started just creating like that so unlike what you said initially i never started with a routine or a discipline i just i just yes. went at it because i felt for it but now uh luckily because of the support that i'm getting getting from the platform and other creators i think i know uh it just it just it's it's just like how it happens at gym right you start you go with the intention of losing weight but somewhere i think you fall in love with the process like when you pick that iron you know that okay this this is amazing this feels yeah. amazing so the next time you're picking the iron you you sort of your intuition tells you how to pick it so Sorry, that just, that's just what happened with yeah muscle memory so i know now maybe what could work what could not work and it's a relearning process you experiment fail pick up go back again so yeah that's how i look at content creation all right so last question for the podcast and i ask this to everybody on the podcast it's about your life lessons i i feel that everyone uh, has traveled has learned and done everything in life but everyone has a very different perspective and has gone through very different things in life right so what is your life lesson um my life lesson well wow, that's such a deep question that you asked me <laughs> uh, but my life lesson is simple i think life is too short uh um, to have any regrets and i know that a lot of people my age or our age in the process of not having any regret they go on to have more regrets right <laughs> so like they, they want to they want to travel they want to have uh they want to be with somebody and and all of that because they just think that they're going to regret it later but while life is short and you can't have any re- re- regrets i think valuing what you have is very very important um be it your environment your family your job the work that you're doing simply appreciating it acknowledging it uh, taking care of it nurturing it helps to take you to the next step of your life so yeah that's i think the biggest <laughs> life philosophy that i've adopted right now and i'm going through so ashwarya it was a pleasure speaking to you thank you for taking the time out and uh, it's been wonderful speaking to you i hope our listeners uh, you know get a lot of insight from this uh, create something and on the way become somebody yeah so thank you i'm um, i'm glad thank you so much though i'm not like necessarily a pro pro uh, backpacker but i hope i've been <laughs> able to offer an insight thank you so much for having me here though no really worries. appreciate it thank you have many more tours and travel